What's up, everybody? Xander Santos. First, let me wish everybody a happy 5th of July, commemorating the uh, uh, 45th year of independence of Cape Verde. And um, something I just wanted to plug in is on this day, it's great what we do. We celebrate Cape Verde, and it's important, too, that we don't forget um, the great people like Emilio Cabral that fought and led uh, the whole independence movement for Cape Verde and Guinea and, um, and Guinea-Bissau. And it's uh, um, a lot of times we recognize Cabral, but he's done so much good that I feel like people, um, sometimes for, for reasons other than we can explain, it, he's not given his due props for um, all the good things he's done, not only for Cape Verde, that he did not only for Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau, but for Africa as a whole and for Portugal as well. Because some of the, speaking in Africa, some of the people that uh, led the, the the, the revolutions that would eventually expel the colonials from uh, from Angola and um, Mozambique because the Portuguese colonizers, they didn't want to leave, you know. They were the last ones to give up the strongholds over there, you know, and it was in a forceful manner. And all of those leaders in those countries that led and fought against the, the, the Portuguese colonizers, there were people that were influenced and taught and inspired by Emilio Cabral, you understand? So... It's imperative that we know that his fight wasn't just for Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau. It was for the whole of Africa. And even for the world, and even in um, Portugal, like, I'm, I'm here in Cape Verde, and a lot of times when I hear them celebrate and talk about um, the um, the Portuguese, the, the, the Carnation Revolution that happened in 1974, I believe, and every year they celebrate on April 23rd or 24th. It's escaping me right now. And they they always fail to mention, and it's not by accident they fail to mention, and they will never mention it about the fact that Amilcar Cabral and what he was doing in Africa is something that set the stage for their own uh, revolution that would eventually reintroduce democracy to their country in Portugal. Because what happened is um, the dictators Salazar and and um, Contana, uh, I forgot the, the the other guy that was a dictator over there. What happened is eventually they had to send resources from Portugal to uh, Africa to, to fight and contain the movement for independence. Unfortunately, it did not succeed. But what that did, it, it, it weakened their stance back home. So what that did is enabled them to regroup and and fight for, uh, not even, they didn't fight. It was a, a peaceful revolution, which is great. You know, but it's only because those dictators, they were weakened because they were sending resources and troops and everything to fight off Cabral and the other revolutionaries in Africa. At times, like let's say if there was like 50,000 troops over there, or, or Cabral and them didn't have no more than 10,000, but he was very tactful and he strategized well, and they were able to fight them off in a, to the point that we were able to gain our independence. So it's important that we recognize them, and even um, sometimes it's unfortunate that we wait for um, you know the international community to recognize people. Sometimes people, our own people, before we recognize them, even in them. Um, BBC uh, History Magazine recognized Amilcar Cabral as the second greatest world leader of all times, like in history. I don't, I don't know if Jesus, I don't think Jesus is on there. I'm like, yeah, he, then I guess he was number one. But I don't know, he's a histor in a historical sense, uh, uh, he could make, could have made the list. But Amilcar Cabral was considered number, was considered number two, and number one was none of your traditional white leaders that you know. It wasn't Kennedy, it wasn't Lincoln, it wasn't Churchill. It was none of those people. They considered Amilcar Cabral. And I, I'm not saying that, um, you know, that, that the props is due because they said it, because scholars and people who know Cabral know uh, his merit, know what, what his worth is and, and his weight, you understand? But sometimes it happens that we don't give i seen the same, you know, we've all seen the same thing happen with Cesare ever. I remember, you know, hearing stories when she was here in Cape Verde and she would, um, she'd be in pubs and she would sing for drinks and people didn't recognize her talent or at least didn't give her the props. But as soon as the international community did, it's like everybody rallied behind her. We got to stop that, you know, waiting for acknowledgement from the outside people uh, to tell us that our people are great before we recognize them as great, you understand? So on this day, absolutely, we're celebrating Cape Verde independence and all that, but let's not forget the importance of Emilio Cabral in Cape Verde, in Guinea, in Africa, and in the world in general. All right, he was a great man, great leader, did so much for us, and let's celebrate that. One love.